God deserve our praises. Our God deserve our thanks. Our God deserve our praises. Hallelujah. Worship him. Thank him for he is good and his mercies endure forever. For our God is good. Our God is good. Our God is awesome. Our God is glorious. Our God is beautiful. There is no one like him. There's no one that can be compared to him. Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we give you the praises. Be thou exalted, King of glory. Be thou exalted, Lord of lords. Be thou exalted, I am that I am. We give you the praise, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and worship him for his faithfulness. Hallelujah. For his faithfulness upon your life. Hallelujah. For his mighty works upon your life. Hallelujah. For him being God. For him being God. For him being God. The God that changeth not. The God that liveth forevermore. Worship him. Lord, we honor you. We appreciate you. Be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. Be thou exalted. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we honor you. Be thou exalted, King of kings. In the name of Jesus, we appreciate you, Father. We give you the praises, O King of kings, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you thanks because you deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve our thanksgiving. You deserve our thanksgiving, O Lord. You deserve our thanksgiving, O King of kings. You deserve our thanksgiving, O Lord of lords. You deserve our thanks, O King of kings. We appreciate you. Be thou exalted, ancient of days, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we approach your gates this evening, O Lord, with thanksgiving. We approach your court this evening, O Lord, with praise, O King of glory. Because you deserve them, O Lord. Because of your mightiness, O Lord. Because you are great, O Lord. Because you are awesome. Because you are glorious. Be thou magnified. Be thou lifted up. Be thou exalted exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we appreciate you. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' gracious name we have prayed. I want us to go ahead and appreciate this God. Hallelujah. I want us to worship him in the spirit. Hallelujah. I want us to really worship God this evening. You know, worshiping God is you remembering the awesomeness of God. Hallelujah. Remembering and knowing how good, how big, how beautiful this God has been in your life. Worship him this evening. Hallelujah. Worship him. Hallelujah. Worship him. Worship him. For our God is so great. He has been so awesome. In the name of Jesus Christ, his loving kindness towards us is enormous, O Lord. We cannot just count it, we can measure it. You are immeasurable, O Lord. You are immeasurable, O King of Kings. You are immeasurable, O Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Be thou magnified King of glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we worship you for the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you and we worship you, O Lord, for the church, O King of glory. For you have been faithful to the church. You've been faithful, O God, in the name of Jesus. You've been building your church from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Moving it from grace to grace. So Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, keeping it, shielding, shielding it, guarding it, O oh Lord. It can only be you. It can only be you, Father. That is why we are saying, Lord, be thou exalted. Be thou exalted, King of kings. Be thou exalted, Lord of lords. Be thou exalted, I am that I am. 
In the name of Jesus, thank you, faithful God. Be thou exalted, the saint of days. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want us to pray from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Hallelujah. That said, Hallelujah. And I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, Hallelujah, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. This evening I want you to tell him, Lord, here I am in your presence again. Hallelujah. Father, I'm laying this body down. Hallelujah. I am presenting this body down to you, O King of glory. Just surrendering it to you, O Lord. Asking King of glory that you will accept this sacrifice, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, that you will accept my body, O Lord. Accept my body as a living sacrifice to you oh God a living sacrifice without a will that your will only will be accomplished in my life in the name of Jesus Christ Father Lord that only your will be accomplished in my life in the name of Jesus Christ thank you King of glory for even in today's service oh Lord your word oh Lord will remove every conformity with the word in my life in the name of Jesus Lord only your word oh King of glory the word from above oh Lord is taking root in me is rooting in me oh Lord causing every conformity with the word to be dissolved in my life to be reversed in my life in the name of Jesus Christ Father Lord only you O King of glory only you O Father and I'm surrendering myself to you this evening in the name of Jesus that only you will go ahead and take charge that only you will go ahead and take preeminence in my life in the name of Jesus Christ thank you a saint of days blessed be your holy name in Jesus mighty name we have prayed I want us to pray hallelujah the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 it said we should come boldly hallelujah into the throne of mercy hallelujah we should come boldly unto the throne of grace hallelujah we should come boldly that we may obtain mercy and find grace hallelujah that will help us in the day of need in time of need this evening we are at the throne hallelujah that throne of grace i want you to tell the lord father king of glory i am I have come, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, that access that you have given to me, I'll utilize it this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, King of glory, according to your word, O oh Lord, in John chapter 5, he said there was a pool. Hallelujah. This evening, O oh Lord, there is a pool in this place. Hallelujah. There is a pool in this place. Hallelujah. Father, King of glory, I dip myself. Hallelujah. I have come to that pool, O oh King of glory. There is that pool, that pool, that pool that is in Eden right now. That pool that is online right now, O oh Lord. That pool that is on the virtual church right now, O oh Lord. That pool that you are going to stare, O King of glory. I simply ask, O King of kings, as you stare it, O God, as it is being stared, O King of glory, Father, that I will hear that word, O Lord. Father, that I will get that word, O Lord. That the revelation of that word, O King of glory, that will cause me to receive my healing this evening, O Lord. Father, I get it, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I get it, O King of glory, in the name of Jesus Christ and as I get it oh Lord it will begin to deal with every stagnancy in my life in the name of Jesus every stagnancy every every situation oh Lord that needs to be attended to this evening oh King of glory father your word is causing a reversal oh Lord in the name of Jesus Christ your word is causing a reversal O King of glory in the name of Jesus Christ my Lord and my Father ah, there is no situation there is no disability in me around me as a result of this service O Lord in the name of Jesus Christ everything that you have not planted in me everything that is not from you O God that are rooted in me O King of glory this evening O Lord 
there shall be a reversal in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, there is a reversal, O King of glory. In the name of Jesus, there is a reversal, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you. I give you the praises, O King of glory. I give you the honor. I give you all the adoration. Be thou exalted, Father. Be thou exalted, King of glory. Be thou exalted, ancient of days. Just go ahead and worship him. For he will, he will do today. In Eden, in the micro churches, to everyone that is connected this evening, O Lord. Everyone that is under the influence of this service this evening is receiving their healing, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. There is a great demonstration of the power of the Most High God. There is a great demonstration of the Holy Spirit in all over the platforms, oh God, that is under the influence of this ministration this evening. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful God, for healing is taking place. Thank you, Father, for there is deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for your people are sharing testimonies as a result of this service. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' gracious name we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody give Jesus a big hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's lift our hands and begin to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Blessed be the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift our holy hands, He won a Singing, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name. to be praised and so we live so we live our he wanna God singing blessed oh blessed be the name Blessed be the Lord. Oh, it's worthy, it's worthy to be praised. So we live to our He wanna go. Oh, sing it, blessed. Blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Oh, who is worthy? Who is worthy to be praised? And I don't. So we lift up. Jesus, oh, blessed be the name. Oh, blessed be the 
Charlie. Oh, bless the beauty of name. Oh, who is worthy? Who is worthy? Who is worthy to be praised? So we lift up. Just as I am, empty-handed, but all I feel is forever. I am changed by Your love. In our praises of your magic oh your grace has found me has found me just as I am oh empty handed empty handed for my life oh forever ever I am chained by your love oh, in the praises of your mind oh we see majesty Majesty, yes, you are majesty, yes, you are majesty. Oh, we see majesty. Oh, forever, for I am changed by you, Lord. Presence of your mind, oh Jehovah, and let the tremble. Say, Almighty Redeemer, he will let the tremble. I say, Immortal Redeemer, he will let the tremble. Jehovah Jireh, let the tremble. Almighty Redeemer, he ran a lady tremble. Oh, Sean Divide, I ran a lady tremble. We sing hallelujah. hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Oh, this is heavenly language. Yes, it's a heavenly language. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Yes, it's a heavenly language. Yes, it's a heavenly language. Yes, it's a heavenly language. Oh, hallelujah. language. Only it's a heavenly language. Yes, it's a heavenly language. He's a now sing hallelujah. Hey. Oh, hallelujah. Hey. We sing hallelujah. Hey. We 
we sing hallelujah hey. we sing hallelujah hey. yes is our heavenly love I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see any say I never see God has changed it, Lord. Jesus, there is no one like you. I say you are the God that changes not. Jesus, you are the God. You never, never change. before heaven and appreciate the Lord for who he is. 
He is the Lord that changeth not. And therefore let us give thanks and glory to him that is dependable, to him that is consistent, to him that never change and never fail. Let us lift up our voice and appreciate the name of the Lord and worship and worship and adore him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless the name of the Lord. We appreciate you, Father. For you are a good God. You are an awesome God. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Father, for your love. And thank you for all that you have continued to do in our midst. We appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, the Lord is good. Say, the Lord is faithful. Say, the Lord is good. Say, the Lord is faithful. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Say, my God has been good to me from January to today and to the end he remains faithful in my life shout hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit our father in heaven we are grateful ever grateful to you ever grateful Lord and we appreciate you we honor you for all you have continued to do in your church and in your family. And we say, may all glory and honor and power be unto you forever and ever. Amen. Be unto you forever and ever. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please take your seat. I want to welcome you to this midweek service. Whether you are connected online or you in the micro church or here, a very special welcome to each and every one of us in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. You know that Sunday is our Thanksgiving service. Amen. Do you have something to thank God for this year? I don't know about you. I have many things, glorious things to thank the Lord for. And I want you to look again into what the Lord has done for you this year. And appreciate him, appreciate him, appreciate him, and acknowledge him. Praise the Lord. Say God is good. This evening, just briefly, I want to talk about the need for meditation. Amen. The need for what? Uh, sometimes it is difficult to understand what meditation is because people are applying meditation in many forms of relaxation or emptying of the mind as they call it they empty they say you have to empty your mind especially those in yoga another religious thing they apply meditation in a way that is inconsistent with the word of god praise the lord and so we shouldn't learn the word of the world in meditation. We should learn the word of God in meditation. Very often we don't understand how much time we spend on meditation. We don't get it. But we apply meditation like faith most often in the negative way. Most often in the negative way. Everybody applies faith every day. Everybody applies faith. The problem is that 
it is not based upon the word. Amen? Amen. Everybody applies faith daily. But Jesus said that we should have faith in God. Meaning that you can have faith in almost everything else. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you walk from the beginning of the month to the end of the month, you are applying faith that they will pay you at the end of the month. Is it not true? You don't have that money before you walk. So everybody that works daily, they put, they put faith at work. Because you have faith that at the end of the work, you'll be paid. Is it not true? When they don't pay you, that's when there's trouble. Amen? Now, you have faith that when you sit on the chair, the chair will carry your weight. Is it not? But if the chair is shaky, before you will sit, you will like to look again. Is it not true? But ordinarily, you have faith that when you are sitting down, that that chair will be under you to carry your weight. Amen. Amen. And now if you see a chair and they say that this chair can only carry a weight of 30 kilos, they wrote it there. Now that information, faith comes by hearing. When you want to sit, you ask yourself, what is my weight? Why? Because you have seen by writing that this chair can only carry what? 30 kilos and you are 55. And so when you want to sit now, you sit cautiously. You don't sit comfortably. You know why? The hearing of the writing has affected you. So, meditation, we apply meditation every day. But it's just that it is not in the way that God has designed that we should apply meditation. We don't put it in the right context. And that is why as we are coming to the end of the year, and Sunday is our Thanksgiving service, how you give thanks is a function of how well you want us to know that we have meditation on different things on daily basis. But whether it is the right kind of meditation is another thing altogether. Just like faith. We apply faith every day. Every day we apply faith. You walk and believe that by the end of the month you'll be paid. That's faith. Amen? Amen. When you want to sit on the chair, you believe that that chair will carry your weight without evidence. That's faith. Praise the Lord. And so we have application of faith on a daily basis. But what Jesus said to us is to have the God kind of faith. That's what Jesus said to us in Mark 11. He said, have the God kind of faith. In the same way, meditation, we spend time on meditation every day. Every day. But whether it is the right kind of meditation is a different thing altogether. How many of you, you woke up one morning, you were thinking about the things you need to do for the whole day? You did that, maybe today even. That's meditation. So you actually spend some time in meditation. Amen? Amen? You thought about how you are going to get to church, maybe the traffic and all that, whether you make it on time or not. That's meditation. So we spend a lot of time on daily basis in meditation. And like I said, many religious groups and the occult, they spend a lot of time in meditation. In meditation. Amen. So just like faith, we need to have the God kind of meditation. We need to have Bible-based meditation. Amen. We need to have Bible-based meditation. Why is meditation important? Some people say meditation is the emptying of your mind. You empty your mind of junk. You try to separate yourself from certain things. And so you dwell upon a purpose. 
You dwell upon a passion. Amen. I read a story about a man that tried to build a bridge. And every time they tried to construct that bridge, it will collapse. After a while, the man now decided to spend three days in meditation. He just took bread and took water and locked himself up for three days. He focused on this bridge. Why does it collapse? Why is this bridge not standing? And then at the end of the three days of meditation, he came out. And in that time, his mind was cleared. And then he received new insight about that construction. And by the time he came out and gave the guideline, they did it. The same bridge, the same place, the same time. After three days, he was able to build that bridge. Praise the Lord. So, meditation, when the world says it's about emptying your mind and all that, that is the world. But Christian meditation is about filling your mind, filling your heart. Praise the Lord. That is what Christian meditation is all about. You focus on God. You focus on the work of God. You focus on the word of God. The word of God have an entrance in you. Beyond having an entrance, you dwell upon the word. You dwell upon the word. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Like Colossians 3, 16 said to us, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Praise the Lord. So, First, the word of God has to enter into you. Now, it has to dwell in you. It has to habitate in you. Now, when we actually say we are spending time in praying and fasting, that is actually spending time in meditating upon the word and the work of God. This is what people don't understand. Praying and fasting is actually meditation and prayer in the word of God. That is another name for it. Amen? Amen. He says in verse 16, Colossians chapter 3, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatever you do, in word or deed, in word, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Praise the Lord. So, when the word of Christ dwell in us richly, and we meditate upon it, remember what I said some months ago when we dealt with this subject. I said, meditation leads to habitation. Habitation leads to transformation. Is anybody here? You remember that? Meditation takes us to habitation. Now, habitation takes us to where? Transformation. When you focus, you see, that is why also there is the dangerous part of meditation. When you spend some time in prayer and then you don't have the word of God in you, you don't have the word of God built up in you. And then you spend time, maybe three days, maybe seven days without food. And your mind is empty. Without knowing it, you open the doors for the devil. There is a dangerous part. And that dangerous part is just a thin line that separates it. And many people have gone into error through prolonged fasting, but without the word. Listen to me. Any meditation with zero word or without the word of God in you, it can lead to madness and confusion. That is why the Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Dwell in you what? Richly. Not just to dwell, but let there be a concentration of the word of God. Let there be the fullness of the word of God in you. In you. So, 
when you meditate actually the spirit of god begins to sort out the word in you and begin to release them release them release them release them release them praise the lord you any meditation that is void of the word of god will take you to a dangerous level and i have seen people that entered into 21 days praying and fasting and they didn't have the word in them and then they began to hear voices and as they began to hear the voices because they were not under spiritual authority to guide them and by the way by the way it is dangerous to embark on long praying and fasting without a spiritual authority to supervise you did you hear what i just said i have cancelled i have cancelled listen to me i have cancelled the praying and fasting of some of my leaders they said to me they want to fast for 21 days and i said for what and then i said don't do it that's it don't do it don't do it if you are going to spend prolonged time in prayer and fasting make sure you have a spiritual authority to oversee what you are doing amen, amen. because if your mind is empty and you go into meditation let me tell you let me ask you this when there is a quarrel and you quarrel with somebody and you go about to think about what the person did what do you take in that meditation is it not the actions of the person is the action of the person you begin to think he said this to me he did that to me and you did that and the devil will feed you more and more and more and more and you said okay i'm making up my mind meditation has led you to habitation which will bring you to transformation of your relationship with that person what that person did was not what brought you to change no maybe the person abused you or insulted you and all that it happened in a moment okay but now when you went home when you were alone when you dwell upon it what happened the offense began to spread it begins to widen up it wasn't what the person did that is leading you now it is your meditation you are dwelling upon the actions of that person and the danger of it is that when the devil begins to lead you on that path you will not see the good thing the person has done before the devil will not allow you to see it praise the lord and so the devil will be flipping the videos this person did this this person, did that, this person, did that, this person. there is no one thing you will lay hold that that person has done that is how you will dictate when the devil is leading you in meditation amen, amen. paul said to us we should meditate upon these things we will get to that he gave us a guide of what we should dwell upon as believers as christians now before we get that we get to that point the first meditation that we come across in the bible was from god himself amen, amen. it was so if god lays a foundation for something and god said do this it is good for you it means that we don't need any other person to say otherwise in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and you will see the connection that meditation can only be based upon the word godly meditation has to be built upon what the word what did god say to joshua in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 remember now moses is dead moses has died and god has told joshua to take over the job of moses amen he said take over my servant moses is dead take over and then joshua did not know he was the one that was going to take over he didn't know that amen, amen. and so god have to give him a crash course on how to be a leader he said this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth <laughs> amen? amen joshua chapter 1 verse what it now i'm going to go back to verse 6 and this is something that all of us should do well do well to master amen 
verse 6. What did God say the first word there? He said, be strong and of what? Good courage. Be strong and of good courage. That's what God said. That's what God said to Joshua. Leadership requires strength and courage. Amen? Verse 7. What did God say? I'm very what? Courageous. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go to verse 9. What did God say? Be strong and what? He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Amen? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Praise the Lord. Now, when we go to verse 18, this is still one chapter. He says, whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him shall be put to death, right? Only what? Be strong and of what? Of good courage. Now, when you see something repeated over and over and over and over, what does it tell you? It tells you that leadership is full of challenges. No matter the level, whether it's just two people or three people you are leading, there are challenges. Amen. When you want to set the word of God into action in the lives of people, you will, you know, you will encounter a fight back. A fight back. So, God has to give Joshua the secret of survival as a leader. The secret for what? Survival as a leader. Let's go back to verse 8 now. Let's go back to verse 8. I, 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 want, you to, I want you to put in your notebook, be strong and good courage. They are qualities of Christian leadership. To be strong and of good courage. There are strong qualities of Christian leadership. Because what? Of opposition. Because of opposition. Because of opposition. Then in verse 8, God said, this book of the law shall not depart from your word, from your mouth. Is that in your Bible? But you shall meditate in it day and night. Now, I just told you that any meditation that is void of the word of God is dangerous. And now, before God will tell Joshua to meditate, he said, this book of the law shall not what? Depart from your mouth. Verse 8 is there in your Bible, isn't it? But you shall meditate in it day and night and night. Now I said to you, meditation leads to habitation. He says that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Then, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Then there will be a transformation. Shout hallelujah. God said to Joshua, this is what will transform your leadership. This is what will transform your assignment. He says, the book of the law, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. He said, but you shall meditate upon the word day and night. May it dwell upon my word. Dwell upon my sayings. Remember my sayings. Think about the things I have said and commanded you to do commanded you to do. He said, when you have thought and dwell upon it, he said, be careful to do it because in meditation, the word of God sinks into you. The word of God spreads into you. It is in meditation that the word of God spread all over you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Acts chapter 19, the Bible said, so mightily grew the word of the Lord. And it was it prevailed. It is in meditation that the word of the Lord grows in you. And as it grows in you, it builds strength. It builds strength. And so when you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, because you have concentrated the power of the word, it works. Have you ever... Okay, let me now ask you if, I, if you take 
ribena. You can't take it in the concentrated form, can you? You have to be mad to take it like that. So what do you do? You dilute it. What is the meaning of dilution? What is the meaning of dilution? You reduce the strength. Is it not? You reduce the strength. But if you leave it alone, it's concentration, isn't it? But when you mix it with water, what is it? And so what happens when you are alone with the word? What happens when you are alone with the word is concentration. Isn't it? And so when you are about the normal way business, you see it begins to be diluted. Diluted. And so as often as possible in the morning or in the night, when you spend time to rebuild the concentration level, and so in that dream, instead of them attacking you and harassing you, you see yourself declaring in the name of Jesus, and the word of God will be true in the physical, in the spirit where you are. Because you have built up a concentration. So mightily you greet the word of the Lord. And what? And it prevails. And it prevails. I want to read that scripture in the, in the new translation, Living Bible. Amen? Amen. Because Acts chapter 19, verse 20, New Living Translation. He says, so the message about the Lord, so the message about the Lord spread widely, spread widely, and what? And had a powerful effect. So the message about the Lord, the same scripture, so mentally grew the word of the Lord and prevail. He says in New Living Translation, so the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. How many of you have heard about the sickness or the disease called cancer? It spreads. The power of cancer is in spreading through the body. If cancer can be located in the early stage, it can be cut off. But when it spreads, it means that it has conquered the body system. Amen. Amen. That's what cancer does. They tell you, sorry, man. The cancer, sorry, sir, the cancer has spread over their body. Amen. But the word of God does the same thing. It spreads through our body. The word of God, it flows through our body. Our ears, when our ears hear gossip, it irritates us. When our eyes see ungodliness, it irritates us. Are you hearing me? When our tongue utter things that are not right, it irritates us. When our leg goes to a place where there is all manner of things, it irritates us. That irritation is because the word of God has spread through your body. It has spread through your system. I remember a few days ago, no, not a few days ago, I think it was about a couple of weeks or three weeks ago, we went to the just right along the road, down the road, um, after that place. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And they were so loud playing music. And amazingly, some people were dancing inside the shop, inside the supermarket. Even some of their workers were dancing. I was so irritated and uncomfortable. Yeah, I was only there a few minutes to buy something. But the environment, even though it's a shop or something, the music they were playing made it so uncomfortable for me. And I'm sure there were many Christians there, but many of them didn't care. I have to ask for the supervisor. Oh, yes. Remember the message, why was Moses angry? You come to a point of level of fellowship with God. Anything evil, when your eyes behold it, it pains you. Hey, it makes you uncomfortable. And, and even when you miss it, you are broken on the inside. And then I said, who is your supervisor here? They pointed to somebody. I said, listen to me. Is this place for mad people? I said, if this is for customers, I said, listen, I may not come here again. I told, I told the person, I said, I may not come here again. Immediately, information was passed. They went and they lowered it. Even as they were lowered it, it was not good enough for me. 
Amen. They considered it low. But I was amazed that many people, it didn't bother them. So you see, the way we look at certain things is a function as the way we are with God, our relationship with God. What may not be wrong with QED may be wrong with Levi. What may be wrong, maybe with me, may not be wrong with mommy. You know why? We have different level of development spiritually. And that is why Paul said we do not judge any man according to human perception. Are you hearing me? He says we don't judge. It's in our prayer point. Come to a place where you look and judge as God judge. And that comes by the meditation, by the dwelling in the word, in the word, in the word. You spend time in the word. The word builds up a concentration in you. Anything that we dilute it, we command a reaction from you straight away. You know why? Little by little, the concentration of the word in you can be weakened. You accept this, you accept that, you accept that you don't know. They are weakening. They are weakening. No, people don't get it. So, when you meditate a lot, when you spend time in the... I would rather have you Dr. Miles Moreau said it is better to pray for 10 minutes and meditate for one hour than to pray for one hour and meditate for 10 minutes. You know why? In meditation, the word is spreading in you. In prayer, you are just uttering the word. Uttering, uttering, uttering. The best way you can become a good worshiper is by meditation. You, you cannot make it Listen, you cannot make it to be a good worshiper without meditation. Those of you in the worship team, you cannot. You cannot be a songwriter without meditation. I was watching on video, one of the videos uh, of Osinachi where she was leading worship and all that. And as she was leading the worship, the camera was shown to the crowd and all that. And many of them were just like, you know, anyhow, carefree kind of, you know. They were like that. Carefree kind of. And this woman was leading the powerful worship. Let me tell you the problem of just playing worship, playing Nathaniel Bassi or Sinaj or Rosinachi or any of these people and you play them and you are singing it. Let me tell you, the problem with that, you don't get anything. It lasts for a moment. As they are singing, you are singing, you are dancing, you are that, and as the end, it ends, you play another one. You get nothing. You get nothing. And that is why many of you can sing the song without the spirit. Yeah, you can sing any of the songs without the spirit. It is in quiet meditation that the spirit the spirit in the word will affect you. Meditation is a powerful tool. Even in thanksgiving, meditation is a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool. People that don't meditate are, are very often ungrateful people. They forget easily. They forget easily. Amen. Sometimes I can spend two hours in meditation in the morning. Two hours straight. Whether I am listening to something and all that, you will see me quietly meditating. And I keep chewing the word that I'm hearing. The things that I'm hearing, I keep chewing it. He said, let the message of the word, let the word spread in your body. Let the message, let it take deep root in you. You know why? You saw that it will conquer sickness, it will conquer disease, it will conquer infirmity. When there is a concentration of the word of God in you, whatever that tries to come, it will dilute it. Amen. That is why you can feel the effect but without the consequences. Because the enemy wanted to put the attack. You felt the pain but the word of God diluted it. Shout hallelujah. 
the level of concentration you have in the word will determine how you will overcome challenges and attack meditation God said to Joshua keep up with meditation he says meditate upon the word day and night day and night dwell upon the word and then courage and strength comes out of meditation did you hear what I just said courage and strength comes out of the word of the word You can meditate the wrong way. That's why David says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord. If you meditate on the wrong thing, it will hurt you. It will hurt your work with God. And unfortunately, many people have dwelt on meditating on the wrong thing until they trigger a stroke in their body. Maybe they were owing money in the bank. Now, they, they, they enlarged the problem so much so that the problem conquered them and triggered a stroke in their life. There are people it has killed. They thought about the situation. They magnified it so well. Magnified the problem. They magnified the problem. Suddenly, they died. And that is why Paul says, meditate upon these things in Philippians chapter 4. Paul told Timothy on the things to meditate upon. But what I'm talking to you now is about the need for meditation in your life. I am believing God next Wednesday we will talk about the things to meditate upon. But now, know the things. If you can dwell upon the goodness of the Lord, if you are alive today, it's already enough for you to give thanks to God. Are you hearing me? That you are not in hospital, that you are not in medication, that you are not disabled. If you fail to give thanks, you are ungrateful. Praise the Lord. And there are people you should appreciate this year. Whether by writing or whether by a gift, you look at what is like in your life. You appreciate them. Sometimes we bother so much on what to give them. No. It's the thought you give towards them that matters the most. Are you hearing me? It's the thought. You dwell upon what is like in your life. And as you dwell upon it, you say, Ah, God has used this person to make my life better. I tell people in Munich those days, I say, Love your boss. Appreciate your boss. Give your boss good gifts. And some of them say, why? I say, you don't get it. And yet, when they lose their job, when they lose their job, the Bible said that Jesse called David. He said, take this bread, take these things to your brothers in the battlefront. He said, but take also this to their captain. Are you hearing me? That's in the Old Testament. He said, take these things to your brothers in the army. But take also this to their captain. When the war is tough, if he remembers the fathers of the children of uh, Jesse, he will put them behind and say, this place, their father brings bread. If you are a captain, won't you do that? But those people, their father does not remember. He says, Send them, send them. Whether they shoot them or don't, you will call the one that the father remembers you. Is it not true? The Bible said a man's gift. Are you hearing me? I was telling mommy about somebody that wants to get a job from me. A job, seven million naira. He wants to get from me. He's busy writing. I said, let him continue writing. Amen. When you need a job, you show up. You market yourself. The Bible says a man's gift makes you. You market yourself. When you meditate, you say, ah, this job is worth seven million. It's a big job or it's a big project. What do you do? 
you market yourself. You think Oyibo, Oyibo, the white people, you think they are stupid. They will design a new product, they will make some free. Are you hearing me? They will make testers free. You carry and put. You, in the shop, uh, shop right, you carry and chew. You pass them. You may not have bought, but they gave it to you what? Free. Somebody will buy. But that thing in your mouth, one day you meditate upon it. It's a seed. No, is it not true? You will think about it. You will think about it. And so God said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall do what? Meditate upon it day and night. And that is why you should not meditate upon the word of man, but on the word of God. On the word of God. On the word of God. God. Dwell upon the word of God. The word of man is not dependable. But the word of God is trustworthy. Say meditation. meditation. Do you know that meditation can give you strength to get up from a sick bed? By his stripes I am healed. Why am I lying here? Why am I lying here? Where am I lying here? Who are those that lie down? Who are those that cannot get up? They seek. I am, I am healed. Jesus came to make me a healer. Uh, my pastor said, we are not just those that are healed. We are those that are healed. Ah, by his stripes, I am healed. He took my sickness. He took my diseases. Ah. And you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. And he will take away sickness from the midst of thee. Anyone that eat my flesh and drink my blood shall not die. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. As we bought the image of the first Adam, even so, we bear the image of second Adam. First Adam was a living soul. Second Adam. Ah. Ah. Second Adam is a what? Life giving spirit. Are you a living soul? No. What is the image of the second Adam? Life giving. Ah, if I'm life giver, should I be paralyzed? No. Should I be sick? No. Why? That is consistent with the first Adam. So, if I don't have the image of the first Adam, and I have the image of the second Adam, and the first Adam is used to lying down, is used to sickness and disease, and so the second Adam was used and is used to telling people, rise up and be healed. So, what am I now? It's not possible to live first and second Adam the same. Praise the Lord. This conversation I've had with you now, in the last two minutes, it's enough to wake even a dead man. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Rise on your feet. Who are you, first or second Adam? Second. Think about first Adam. He was just a living soul. First Adam was a man of the dust. The second Adam is a man of what? Of the spirit. Of the spirit. Of the spirit, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Next week, by the grace of God, on Wednesday, we will finish this. But when you spend time in meditation before Sunday, in thanksgiving, oh, the way you will thank God, it will be more than anybody else own. Praise the Lord. Because the house you are saying that God didn't give you, it is because you are still alive. Oh. Dead people don't get house. Are you hearing me? Have you seen a dead person signing a contract to rent a house? Okay, in some places in the world they do. The reason why you will still sign that contract is because you are alive. Lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, am grateful, Lord. I am grateful, Lord. You know, that's why I love this. When I remember his promises, I shout hallelujah. 
When I remember his mercies, I shout hallelujah. When I remember his love, I shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hold on. Thanksgiving is on Sunday. Praise the Lord. Do you know that sometimes just getting up, looking through the window from my room and seeing the green and all that, I am thanking God. Are you hearing me? There are people when they open their window this side, gutter with mosquito. They open this side, gutter with mosquito. And so they close the window, close it because of smell. To open your window and see trees, it's a luxury. Shout hallelujah. Oh, you don't know yet. Okay, you will find out. You will find out. Amen. Go to where you are living and try to dig the ground to plant tree and you see what the landlord will tell you. They say Tenan does not plant tree. <laughs> the landlord will say, Where are you planting? <laughs> what are you doing? He said, You are planting trees. <laughs> he said, Who sent you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So to get up and open the window and see trees round about, I give thanks. Praise the Lord. I was talking to one of our daughters this morning in Munich. He said, Dad, I opened the window. Everywhere is white, including the trees. Snow. It's very cold. I said, I opened the window. I see trees. Everywhere is green. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Uh-huh. She's all white. She can't go out. I see green. I can't go out. <laughs> Amen. And I said to her, where you are is a colony. Where I am is a country. Shout hallelujah, somebody. I bless you. Ah, I bless your time of fellowship. I bless your time of meditation. I bless your time of prayer. I bless the time of your studying. I pray that the concentration of the word will dilute every other thing. The concentration will dilute sickness, uh, will dilute poverty. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You are blessed. And you are blessed. In Jesus' precious name, let us lift up our tithe and offering and give thanks unto the Lord for his mercies, for his faithfulness, for his love. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you. I love you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Say, Lord, I will give you more and more. Forgive this little token in my hand. It will change. And I will give you more. And more. And more. By the grace of God. Shout hallelujah. That will be your testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, remember, our Thanksgiving is on Sunday, and it's going to be glorious. It's going to be what? Glorious. And I know that our Thanksgiving will transform your life. Yes. Our Thanksgiving will preserve your miracle. Yes. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. you are blessed. Yes. Lift up your hand. May your hand always be raised by God. Amen. May your hand always be raised by God. Amen. I pray for everyone connected to this service. May your hand always be raised. Amen. You will never stretch your hand to beg bread. Amen. Your hand will never be feeble. Amen. But the strength of God will always be in your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, Father, as we have decreed it, wherever your people are, may these blessings rest upon them. May these blessings rest upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Say God is good. Say God is good. Let us share the grace together globally. 
So for our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our life. God bless you.